because our hands are soiled. But we're gonna get to a yeah, good. I'm here today with several other members of the Metro Valley Patriots Tea Party, and we've been working very closely uh, with the Freedom Works organization, an organization to champion the ideas and concepts of liberty and free enterprise, the concepts of limited government, and an accountable government, your government, a government that listens to we the people. And so I'm very pleased to announce today, some of you may have seen this earlier in the day, that Freedom Works has proudly and strongly endorsed our candidate for Senate, Mr. John Racy, as yeah. their You all are not into politics. You are concerned about the way we're going to see this future and how we're going to get through this thing. And it's based on freedom, capitalism, and the favorite of all free enterprise. So we're there. We are the first state to have cap and trade leveled on us. And it's called House Bill 103. House Bill 103. And it came into effect in July of 2009. A special session. What happened? Well, a lot of people don't know about it. Today I was do down talking to the West Virginia Coal Association. I was surprised when I asked the board how many people here knew about it. Only half the hands were up. So when I look across the state and we're looking at the repercussions or the future repercussions, they're huge. How does it go? Every power plant just 15 years from now in the state of West Virginia will burn 25% less West Virginia coal because of the West Virginia renewable energy. Twenty-five percent less. It'll have to be replaced by renewable energy. And in the bill, you know what the description or definition of renewable energy is? They don't know either. There's no description. I've got it down to pretzels and banana wackies somewhere in there. But one of the tragedies and one of the real tragedies is even in the bill of the renewable energy. As you know, West Virginia is abundant with natural resources. They won't let us use any more than just 10% of natural gas. Holy mackerel. They're even eliminating another one of our very, very best natural resources. But what does this mean to all of us? It means something very serious. It means a high rate of anywhere from 5 to 10% in your increase in your electric bills. And when you look across the state of West Virginia, almost 1,000 hospitals, colleges, schools that all look at the same scenario, it's going to be almost a 10% increase in the way they do business too. So when you break it down, government is not the solution to a problem. Government is the problem. Amen. You're here. We have had a restrictor plate put over on us by government. And right now in this country, we're in what is called an industrial coma. How can we get out of that industrial coma? Well, you can certainly listen to everything that went on in this house and certainly everything that went on in, with Governor Manchin and certainly with Obama today, that their answers are printing more money, stimulating an economy with your money, better known as federal money, money that doesn't exist, money that has to be printed up, borrowed, or taxed. And that's what they want to cure the ills. It doesn't work. It has never worked in the history of our country. What we are about is less government, is best government, lower regulation, so the best way to go. Let's get competitive. Let's lower taxation, have regulatory relief in this country, and you will see the shackles come off American business. We will go to the front of the ladder. We are the greatest industrial country in the world's history, but as long as government has come in and restricted us, we won't be. It's impossible. Right today, the most staggering thing that I see is in the United States Senate, in the United States Congress, and everybody here has heard the word earmark, haven't they? Yeah. Yes. We all know what an earmark was, and is. Since 1994, since 1994, there have been 90,000 earmarks passed in this country. 90,000 earmarks have been passed in this country. What's an earmark? 
Earmark is taxation without your approval. Earmarks are regulations without your approval. Earmarks are regulations without your approval. It's a sweetheart deal by career politicians. And what this country needs more now than ever are term limits. Yeah. Yeah. Right across the board. Yeah. Right across the board. West Virginia has been a stomping ground for career politicians. Now we have another one who wants to go to Washington and to join another one who has another one and another one. Look around and see what we can do. I appreciate everything that has gone on today, Lance. I appreciate the endorsement. And I can say this, watch what I do. Watch what I do when I get to the United States Senate. Don't watch what I say, but watch what I do. Because I'm gonna give you all what is called something you probably never had before in West Virginia. It's called good government. And good government starts with capitalism, free enterprise, and what made this country great. Let's take that restrictive plate off. Let's right. get government off our back. As I always sum up all my speeches, it's something that Ronald Reagan said, Henry. There is no such thing as partial freedom. There's only freedom. Right? Right. Amen. 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 Thank you all very much. That's Appreciate right. it. Well, again, I, I think there's no question in anybody's mind. It's easy to see why this was an easy decision. It was an easy decision for an organization whose very purpose all right. First off, talk to us today about what this endorsement means. Well, I, I think there's an old adage in politics. It's called being friends with your friends. And if you can't have the conservative business and you can't have conservative constituents, how am I going to win this election without them? And I think that they've come and they've rallied for me here today. I feel very good about it. I feel very honored. I feel very humble about it. So. The West Virginia Chamber of Commerce and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce this morning announced their endorsement of Governor Joe Manchin. Uh, you're a businessman yourself, obviously. What are your thoughts on that endorsement? Well, I, I think they show their real colors because they picked a career politician over an industrialist and a capitalist and a free enterpriser. But you know, endorsements, my goodness. The endorsement that I want comes from the state of West Virginia and the people of West Virginia, and my best endorsement is coming November 2nd. So that's what I'm getting ready for, and I'm looking forward to it. Talk a little bit about what this endorsement means, uh, being endorsed by someone who you talked today, um, that you end up your speech to create it. Talk right. a little bit about that. Well, what it means to me is exactly what I said. There's no such thing as partial freedom. There's only freedom. And we're talking about good conservative groups here, constitution groups, Tea Party groups that have all come together over one specific specific reason. They're concerned about the future of our country. And I say concerned about it. They're not worried about it, but they're concerned about it. Their, their issues are the lives of their family, the lives of their businesses. And I see a lot of political groups, they're only concerned about politics. Well, this is the group that I want to be endorsed by, and this is what I feel very strongly about, and I couldn't be happier. You're also talking about, you've been endorsed by a lot of people. Can you talk a little bit about some endorsements that you have behind you Well, right now? we, uh, West Virginians for Life is a very good endorsement that happened the other day, which I feel very strongly about. It's about the second or third time that that's occurred. I think that when you look at the endorsements that all of us are going to get in uh, the general election here, I think it's very important that people understand the backgrounds of the candidates. It's important to know what they're, in, what they're being endorsed for. And when you look at this endorsement today, the biggest thing that I'm endorsed for and what I pride myself most on is the fact that I'm being endorsed for what is called the Constitution of the United States. And that's something that I believe in and that's something that will be a charter for what I do in the United States Senate.